The year is 2009. Modern Warfare 2, not that one, is quickly taking over the world. Obama is being by far the president of all time. And in niche corners of the internet, a storm is brewing. Many people are boarding the hype train for a second season of the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. The first season was a unique and engaging experience. From its intriguing mysteries to fascinating characters to the avant-garde way it conducted itself, it was subversive and self-aware back when that actually meant something. It had everybody talking and doing the Hare Hare Yukai dance. It had Kyoto Animation's gorgeous animation. It was on top of the world. So when the follow-up began to air three years later, people were expecting something really special. But they weren't just going to air season two's episodes. No, since the first season was broadcast out of order, how about we rebroadcast the first season in chronological order, mixing in all the new episodes from season two along with it. I didn't see anybody complaining about this while researching this video like I expected to. But even if it was a necessary refresher after three years, I can imagine that everyone who tuned in to each episode started to feel a little fatigued after this seventh straight week of reruns. On May 22nd, 2009, the first new episode, Bamboo Leaf Rhapsody, finally aired. And in my opinion, this is one of the best episodes from the show. Clang, a home run. Can't wait to see what's next. A month passes before the next new episode airs. It's a standard slice of life summer vacation story where Haruhi rounds up the SOS Brigade to do a bunch of activities before they return to school in two weeks. Looking back at forum posts at the time, some people enjoyed it. Others were quite bored, but the general consensus seems to be that they were interested to see where the story would go from here, and if all these summer shenanigans actually had a point to them. June 26, a new episode comes out that looks eerily similar to the last one. The animation is different, and the voice actor's lines were clearly new recordings, but the story was unchanged. Halfway through the episode, we learn what's going on. The brigade has found themselves in a time loop, repeating the last two weeks of summer because Haruhi subconsciously feels like they didn't do enough over the break. Now this is the sci-fi nonsense that Haruhi is known for, and people became very excited to see how the conflict would resolve itself in the next episode. Just watched Endless 8 Part 2. I have to say it was fantastic. I'm glad I didn't let my girlfriend spoil it for me. But come July 3rd, these feelings of excitement would quickly devolve into anger. The new episode tells the same story as the last one, complete with Kion failing to come up with something to satisfy Haruhi. Come July 10th, more of the same. And as expected, people are not happy. Okay, they stepped over the line. It's not over? How on earth can they not end the storyline yet? Wow. Endless 8 sucks. All of it. One sucked, two sucked a little less, and three sucked the most. Urgh, Kiwani. <laughs> New swimsuits are nice. I'm bored! As the weeks went by, everyone came to the realization that Endless 8 actually meant 8 full episodes of this. New animation, new voice recordings, but the exact same story 8 times over. Forum threads went into a frenzy. Even after the conflict resolved, leaving a small minority of people satisfied, anybody who expressed positive feelings towards the arc were quickly shut down with an excessive amount of swear words. Unless it gives me a BJ and a million bucks, the last one can't give me back the time I wasted watching the first seven. <laughs> This guy's alright. And that's how things would remain to this day. Sure, some people genuinely enjoyed all eight episodes. But on the other hand, I've spoken to people who watched Endless 8 as it aired 13 years ago who are still angry to this day. Sifting through threads and comment sections since its release, it seems like it's mostly brought up just to make fun of it. I've completely stopped watching Haruhi and lost respect for KyoAni. It was clearly a publicity stunt. KyoAni is drunk with their own power. They're doing this because their fans will buy it anyways. They call it Endless 8 because 8 to life is how long they should get in prison for making the- Okay, Gorf Zaplin, calm down. Pledge to the Patreon, it'll make you feel better probably. And while the fans were preaching for all to hear that hell does in fact exist and there are exactly eight circles of it, internally it's hard to discern how KyoAni felt about their own creation. This one article claims that KyoAni staff was in open rebellion over the project, citing an interview where an employee says he thinks that doing the same thing in different ways is very interesting as his co-workers boo him in the background. 
seems more like teasing than anything, but even if it wasn't, that's far from revolt. The closest we've ever come to an answer is through the studio's response to this clip, where former KyoAni employee Yutaka Yamamoto, best known for his work on being a huge piece of shit, apologized at a convention panel for how Endless 8 turned out, saying he was against the idea from the initial pitch. He accidentally stated that he represented the Haruhi production team, a statement he would later retract. But not before KyoAni would release the most aggressively blunt response I've ever seen from a company before. This person has absolutely nothing to do with our company. So, while we may never know how they felt about it fully or why they chose to go down this road, we at least know that they stand by their work publicly. Me personally, I wouldn't just stand by it. I'd be pretty damn proud of it. See, I'm no longer the guy who gladly tore into Endless 8 as a stain on an otherwise pristine show. Over the last year or so, I seem to have awakened my third eye for having bullshit opinions on anime and have completely come around to these episodes. I don't ask that any of you enjoy these episodes the way I do, it's a little ridiculous to expect that considering what we're talking about here. What I do ask is that you walk away from this video with newfound respect for it, because I believe you don't have to enjoy something for you to recognize it as good art. I've got three silver bullets right here that are going to help build my case for me and they- Hey, hey the nerf bullets, YouTube, they're fake. Calm down. <sighs> Okay, point number one. I find the way they tell this story to be very intriguing and unique. It can't be understated how unprecedented this was. We've seen time loop stories before, in fact this isn't even the only one in Haruhi, but never one that subjects you to several monotonous loops in a row. And for those of you who enjoy picking apart little details in a narrative, this arc is for you. Many of the tweaks made to each scene as the episodes go on tell their own little stories. The cicadas are a great example example of this. One of the brigade's summer activities is a cicada catching contest, and after every single run through, Haruhi preaches the benefits of catch and release, saying they should let them out into the wild because maybe they'll return the favor someday. Never passing up an opportunity to shoot down Haruhi's childlike logic, Kiona always responds with this. Now what could a cicada possibly do for me? However, on the final episode, and only the final episode, after he makes his retort, a cicada flies back to him and lands on his net. In a dream sequence where Kion struggles to find out what he can say to break the time loop, a takayaki that Haruhi hands him turns into a cicada. Kion grasps it, and it turns into fireworks in his hand, representing the spark of inspiration that leads to his solution. I don't know about you, but that sounds like returning the favor to me. There's there's this great scene where we see an ant struggling to swim through a knocked over can of soda as Nagato explains the unnerving details of the time loop to everyone's horror. It's a really cool way to convey the hopeless feelings of this scene without just cutting to shocked facial expressions. And believe it or not, the brilliant cinematography extends beyond just insects. In episodes 5 and 7, they loop several shots. In episodes 5 and 7, they loop several shots in order to make each loop seem all the more redundant. Roll your eyes as you will, but don't worry, I'll be getting to why I think this is a good thing soon. Episode 5 has a great scene where it puts emphasis on the clock slowly ticking on the final day of the loop by placing the camera in the second hand's perspective. I'm sorry, that is so creative and cool. I especially like how it cuts to black right before midnight because as we all know, that final second will never come. This sense of dread is expanded upon by the music getting more sinister as the episodes go on. Like, I'm talking Pikmin 2 Submerged Castle and Ocarina of Time Shadow Temple levels of I'm in my early 20s and I still feel unsettled after listening to this. They tease the audience with false hope a lot too. Like when Kion starts running after Nagato to talk to her from episode 2 onward, fooling us into thinking that something's going to change. You could say that all the non haruhi characters meeting up to fruitlessly discuss the time loop is an example of this too. Speaking of the characters, you all know I love Haruhi because of them. Them. And let me tell you that one KyoAni employee was right when he said exploring the same scene in different ways is interesting, because seeing the same characters react to the same scenarios in different ways is like a characterization wet dream. We see Kion express excitement about setting off fireworks only to be annoyed in the next loop because he's tired. When he learns he worked in the hot sun all day just for Haruhi to own a frog costume, he expresses defeat by saying ribbit in a dejected tone. 
However, in about half of the loops, he looks ready to give Haruhi a piece of his mind, but backs off every time when he sees how happy she is to own the costume. One thing I adore about Haruhi is the fact that it's one of the few anime I've seen that actually attempts subtlety. On seven separate loops, Koizumi suggests the possibility of Kion whispering I love you into Haruhi's ear to see if it breaks the time loop. When he fervently refuses, Koizumi says that maybe he can do it, and on every occasion we don't get to see Kion's reaction to this, leaving the viewer's mind to fill in the tantalizing details. The long and short of it is, I'm a detail freak and I love creative visual storytelling. And let's be real, even if this isn't your cup of tea, I think it'd be hard to deny how damn cool some of this stuff is. If you're an asshole like me who thinks way too much about everything, then you probably had a great time with this arc. Speaking of thinking way too much about things, that's how I arrived at my next point. I am proud to announce that starting today, our company is now Meta. Over the last decade, I feel like meta commentary has been bastardized to a very extreme degree. There's an endless number of shows, movies, and games that have tried to be subversive or insightful by just pointing out that the actions its characters are taking are in fact tropes that have been iterated upon for decades. For your garden variety fantasy world isekai, these moments where a character criticizes the show's world feel more like a how do you do fellow kids than anything else, so needless to say I don't find it very flat. Flattering, and I can only imagine how bad the fatigue may be for some of you. I haven't been around this medium for too long, I mean hell, I just found out about Skittles the other day. Which, by the way, I've been making Haruhi videos for almost two years, and none of you motherfuckers ever thought to tell me about the most influential AMV ever made. I'd verbally assault my audience some more, but this might have been for the best. As I'm just now realizing that a video with more stylish and fluid editing than anything I've ever made came out in 2007 when computers looked like this. What? Oh, 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 no. <laughs> Dude, you can't be serious with this. Anyways, I do love it when stories do meta commentary right. Spec Ops The Line and Undertale are two easy examples from off the top of my stinky gamer brain head, as heavy handed as they often are. And while you could argue that it wasn't the intention, I think Endless 8 stands among some of my favorite subversive works. Every story is an amalgamation of recycled ideas, and I think slice of life shows get the raw end of the deal far too often. If you remember my May Dragon video, I talked about how even within the same studio, I was experiencing a severe case of deja vu between their works. Seeing the same events over and over again through the eyes of somebody new each time. Festivals, fireworks, shrine visits, amusement parks, high schools, beach episodes, that thing where people run to school with toast in their mouth because they're late. One could argue that because of its nature, Slice of Life is much more limited than a fictional setting when it comes to ideas. But I'd say they're not giving real life enough credit. I mean, do you think you could point me to the anime about a deep sea fisherman in his late 50s? How about the one about a group of college friends working a construction job? Or better yet, what about that one show where none of the characters are in high school? This is where Haruhi comes in to put a big old mirror up in front of the genre. Endless 8 1 floods the viewer's senses with 23 straight minutes of stereotypical slice of life summer activities. And then it hits you with them all again seven times over as if to ask if this is what you really want. In excess of the same successful tropes that never fail to get people excited whenever they're announced for their favorite franchise, all looping endlessly as the similarities between each cycle become more and more apparent. The funny thing is, I'm not even sure which side of the fence I stand on regarding this issue. I always get excited whenever I see a school festival arc or a summer activity episode approaching because, well, I think they're fun and nostalgic. But at the same time, I find myself comparing and contrasting examples of these events in every show I've seen with each other, which is about as exhausting and redundant as it sounds. Trust me, by the time you've seen your 30th beach episode, you'll be wishing for your last. It's an interpretation of Endless 8 that has given me a lot to think about. I wonder where the line should be for when you think you're getting too much of a good thing, or whether or not satisfying trends snuff out amazing new ideas before they're even conceived. And I think a story that gets your brain gears turning at this level is at least worth your time. For my final point, we're talking about something I bring up almost every time I've made a video about Haruhi, the character 
audience parallel. Basically, I believe Haruhi is structured in a way to make you feel the same emotions its characters do at any given time, and I absolutely adore it for this. There's the example of the first three episodes, not including any real sci-fi stuff, just long-winded conversations. So in episode four, Asakura tries to kill Kion because she's bored just like the audience. There's the shock and awe that comes from watching Haruhi take the stage and live alive. There's disappearance, my beloved. Just the way they set up and execute every scene in that movie. You feel everything and it's wonderful. Of course, it's not just a gimmick either. I think the parallels they attempt to draw make Kion's revelation and disappearance all the more euphoric. Putting the entire show into context and awakening a genuine appreciation for the work within the viewer. Therefore, anything that contributes to this parallel is, in my opinion, worth respecting to an insane degree. It's a good thing that I think this, because no part of the show puts you in the character shoes better than Endless 8. Nagato is an easy example. She takes the brunt of the abuse in this arc by not being affected by the time loops memory wiping thing. So out of 15,532 loops, the equivalent of 595 years, she remembers all of them. The audience getting a shockingly small yet still uncomfortable taste of what she had to go through immediately brings them to her side, justifying her irrational actions and disappearance the second they're introduced. I think it's an important thing to bring up since I've mentioned it twice now. Endless 8 is a very important prerequisite for disappearance. So not only does it have all this cool stuff I've already been talking about, it's also integral to the story of the best part of the series, and in my opinion, the greatest animated work ever put to screen. Feels kinda hard to hate it now, doesn't it? But back to parallels. Sure, it puts you in Nagato's shoes, that's all well and good. But if I remember correctly in all my other Haruhi videos, which you should all totally go watch by the way also like and subscribe the power of suggestion compels you i'm always talking about the audience's parallels to kion so what gives well what gives is i haven't gotten to him yet turns out that after a rewatch i actually found kion's perspective to be more relatable than nagato's which i wasn't expecting at all you might be wondering how that could be since he doesn't retain any memories of previous loops while the audience does and that's where you're wrong see they call it deja vu which modern scholars define as I've just been in this place before, higher on the street, and I know it's my time to go. He talks about it all the time, and we see it shown in clever ways, like how he completes someone else's sentences before they can say them. She shows up and says, These two guys are my brigade members. They do what I say. So if you want something, you can ask them. Notice how in this scene, he brings up two weeks before Haruhi mentions how much time is left in summer. We've only got two, two weeks, weeks to do all that. that. In every other loop, he only retorts after she's done with her sentence. Pretty soon, you'll be able to find yourself doing the same thing. Can't she see the no diving signs? I mean, they're everywhere. Can't you see the no diving signs? They're everywhere. Can't you see the no diving sign? Can't she see the no diving signs? They're everywhere. Can't she see the no diving signs? They're everywhere. Can't she see the no diving signs? They're everywhere. <laughs> All right, hold on. I've got this. <clears throat> Can't she see the no diving signs? They're everywhere. Restrain thyself. Oh. Canst thou not see the no diving signs? The cool thing about all this is it puts you and Kion on the same playing field, involving the viewer in the mystery. A handful of loops all blur together in both of your minds, compelling you to search for a solution with him as equals. Because let's be real, you're working with the same hand he is. Nobody ever tells you that homework is the solution. You have to guess that yourself or see it play out before you. And that's just... Man, Endless 8 is cool, alright? You're free to judge its quality for yourself, but as for me, I think it's a well-executed, well-directed, and ironically enough, very rewatchable experience that's integral to the overall story. I hope I was able to get you to see why I think this way. Make you laugh? Maybe pee your pants a little? I don't know, I'm, I'm stalling because I'm very bad at ending videos like this. Oh, here we go. So in every loop, Kion gets stuck with the bill at the cafe twice. Five people, let's say 300 yen per drink, plus 10% sales tax, which gives us the equation 330 times 5 times 2 times 15,532. Multiply all that, convert to US dollars, and... Well, for 595 years, I guess a bill for $344,000 ain't so bad. Special thanks to Silent Secondary, and volume warning... Mr. Chocolate Salmon! As well as... Danny Dominatrix! and the rest of my wonderful patrons.